بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, إن شاء الله in today's uh, reminder I want to share um, some quick reflections on uh, an ayah that was recited yesterday so yesterday we started Surah Tawbah and in Surah Tawbah at the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about the mushrikun he talks about the um, those who commit shirk those who worship idols um, and they're evil etc etc and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he comes with an ayah he says فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after talking about the mushrikun and talking about the evil etc he says if they repent and they establish the prayer and they give their zakat then they become your brothers in faith now what's interesting about this ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he could have just said that if they repent from their shirk then they become your brothers in faith Yes, if they do tawbah from their shirk and accept Islam, then they your brothers in faith. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two pillars. He mentions if they establish the prayer and give the zakat, then they become your brothers in faith. As if to say that for them to truly believe in Allah, and for us as well to truly believe in Allah, it requires us to what? To establish these two pillars. The pillar of salah and the pillar of zakat. And in today's reminder, I want to focus on salah. We'll talk about zakat tomorrow, inshallah. But today, I want to focus on uh, salah. Now, salah, as we all know, is not, is not something new just for the Muslims, just for the believers, just for the ummah of the Prophet wasallam. We know that previous prophets, yes, were also commanded with salah. When Musa salam, we touched on this before, when Musa salam, was lost in the desert, okay, he sees a fire in the distance. And he says that, let me go to that fire and I'll get some directions, some guidance. There must be people there. He arrives there and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks directly to Musa alayhi salam. And what does Allah say in that first conversation with Musa alayhi salam? He says, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana. Fa'budani wa aqim as salat al He says, indeed I'm Allah. There's no one worthy of worship but me. It's worship me and establish the prayer for my remembrance. The first conversation between Allah and Musa alayhi salam is what? Is about the prayer. Establish the prayer. When Isa alayhi salam is in the arms of his mother, He's a baby in the arms of his mother. We know that when Maryam السلام, gave birth to Isa السلام, it was a miraculous birth. Okay, she goes away. When she comes back to the people, she had taken a vow that she wouldn't speak. So the people started to question, where's this child come from? And Maryam السلام, isn't saying anything. There and then, as Allah mentions in Surah Maryam, Isa السلام, is one of the miracles of Isa السلام, he speaks as a baby. And what does he say? Inni abadullah. Indeed, I'm the servant of Allah. Yes? Inni abadullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma dum tuhiyya. He says that I'm the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The baby is saying this. Isa alayhi salam is a baby. I'm the slave of Allah. Allah has given me the scripture. He's made me blessed wherever I may be. And He's commanded me with what? With the salah and the zakah as long as I live. These two pillars are mentioned again by Isa alayhi salam when he's a baby. And think about that, subhanAllah as a baby, what now is he telling the people? He's telling them about salah and zakah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we know that all the commands were revealed through Jibreel to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam. All of them, one by one. But this command of the salah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam was taken on the night journey, al-Isra wal miraj And he was taken through the heavens. He went past Sidratul Muntaha and this is where the command was given for the salah. This was that beloved action, this gift that was given to the Prophet So the salah, my dear brothers and sisters, is something that we really have to pay attention to. The Prophet he said that the first matter the slave will be brought to account on on the day of judgment is what? Is the salah. He said if that's in place, yes, if that's sound, then the rest of his deeds will be sound. But if the prayer isn't in place, if the prayer isn't sound, if there's issues with the prayer, then of course, the rest of his deeds will be bad. Because what does the prayer signify? The prayer indicates your commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is what the prayer indicates. You, you're busy during the day, you've got this going on, that going on, you've got family issues, you've got work, you've got whatever. But you know that five times a day I need to pray. The time for salah has come. I need to establish the prayer. And you know in Arabic when we talk about iqamat salah establishing the prayer, that means what? Yeah, when you do iqam of something in Arabic, it's you're, you're building it, you're making it firm and solid. So when Allah uses this word of iqamah, He's saying what? That everything else can move around. Yes, your work meeting can move around. Your issue with yani, picking your children up from here and there, all of these things can be moved. But what can't be moved is the salah. That's established. That's in its place. So the salah, my dear brothers and sisters, it's our divine connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's that conversation you have five times a day, everything is going on in life, but you have the opportunity to converse with Allah. It's a gift, as I said, that was given to the Prophet wasallam. So we must re-examine our relationship with the salah. Don't be of those who neglect the prayer. The prayer, subhanAllah, when you think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obligated upon us to pray to Him five times a day. We walk on Allah's earth, we breathe His air, we enjoy His blessings. Yet when it comes to this basic duty, how many of us fail to uphold this basic duty? Is that not the height of ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That when it comes to His fundamental right of Allah is that He's worshipped, that we fail in this worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other issue when it comes to the prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, is that if we take a look at our prayer and we're honest with ourselves, for the vast majority of us, all of us here, myself included, what has the prayer become? It's become a dry ritual that we just muddle through and get to the end without any real thought, any real reflection, any real impact on our lives. And this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable that we stand in front of Allah to pray to Allah and the furthest thing from our, in our, the furthest thing in our mind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're standing praying to Allah. But Allah is not even a thought. We're just going through any of the motions. There's a, one, one Imam, he said a story. He said that uh, one day I was leading the salah, and after the salah, you know, there was confusion. Did I pray three rak'ah or four rak'ah? Yes? So the people started to argue. And he said, one brother stood up. He said, no, no, you definitely prayed three rak'ah. And they were saying, how does he know with such certainty? And he says, you know, I've got four shops. Okay, he said each rakka I was going through each shop, you need a plan for each shop, and I didn't get to the fourth. <laughs> so, subhanAllah, shows us what? Where our minds go in the salah. Yani we're thinking about all sorts. And this is, as I said, not acceptable. So, we need to change it. How do we change it? You know, when you think about the Prophet, والسلام, we know that the Prophet, you know, we get tired here, people complain an hour and a half, yani, why is it taking so long? You know, the Prophet, his night prayer would be the most of the night. And, what, and you know what you, you really reflect on is that what was the Prophet some experiencing that we don't experience? Why is it that he would stand for that long portion of the night? What sweetness was he enjoying that we don't enjoy? And of course it's that divine link, that mahabba that the Prophet had for his Lord. That he is standing in front of the one who is most beloved to him. So how do we try to gain a little bit of that sweetness? And I'm going to share very quickly before I finish three things that we can do to try to improve our salah. Number one is what? Is we need to learn about Allah. How can you worship Allah if you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? This is the first step. Actively learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah? How many of us know the 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah is Ar-Razaq, Al-Wahhab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghaffar, Al-Rahim. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min. What do these names mean? Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the first step. When we learn who Allah is, and we understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, then when you stand in front of Him, it will change your salah. Because you know who you're praying towards. So this is the first step, is that we need to learn uh, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and build that relationship with Him. That's a key to connecting in the prayer. The second thing which we have to do and we must do is learn the meaning of what we're saying in the prayer. You know, honestly, it's, it's really shocking. And don't take this in, 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 uh, you know, in the wrong way. Uh, this isn't me being condescending. But it's very sad that you meet brothers who are 30, 40, 50 years old and we still don't know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. We still don't know the meaning of the Salah. I mean, what, what have we been doing with our lives? What have we been doing with the last 30 years? And it's not difficult to learn the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha will take you no more than five minutes. But why haven't we done it? 
really taking some time out to learn what we're saying in the salah. When we say Subhana Rabbi al Azim, what does that mean? When we say Subhana Rabbi al A'la, what does that mean? When we do the Tashahud, what does that mean? Honestly, brothers and sisters, if you take the next few days and make it a focus, you will learn the salah. And when you learn the meaning of what you're saying, it's going to improve your salah because you're going to know what you're saying rather than just boom, 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 boom. That's so point number two. And the last one, before I finish, is when it comes to the salah, we must be in the right frame of mind. Yes, just taking a few moments before you say Allahu Akbar. And you know when you say Allahu Akbar, you know what you're saying? Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. Everything other than him, than, than him is, is Askar. Allah is Akbar, He is the greatest now. I'm going into Salah, everything else is minute. It's minor, it's nothing. Why? Because I'm standing in front of who? Allah who is Akbar. So taking a few moments just before the Salah to get in the right frame of mind of what you're about to do. And to slow down in the prayer. You know when you slow down and you catch yourself, sometimes you will be just reading through the prayer. And when you catch yourself that I'm just going through this quickly, and you slow down, that will automatically improve the quality of your prayer. Because you just catch yourself and you realize I need to slow down a bit, and I'm in the prayer. So these are a few things that we must try to incorporate uh, into our prayers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us from those who truly connect with Him in the prayer.